Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter Number 3, and today we are on text 31, and maybe text 32. This is Gajendra's Prayers of Surrender. <clears throat> Please repeat. Tam Tadvad Upalabhya. I'm sorry. Artham Upalabhya. Jagannivasaha. Stotram Nishanya. Divijayi. Saha. Samstuvadhi. Chando Mahina Dharunena Samohyamana Chakrayodha Abhyagamad Asha Yataha Dajendra Dam Tadbar Artham Upalabja Jagan Nevasa Stotram Nishamya Divijayi Sahastam Stuvadhi Chando Mayena Garrena Samuhya Manashtra Chakra Yudho Bhyagavada Shuyato Gajendra Tam unto him Gajendra Tadvat, in that way. Artham, who was very depressed because of being attacked by the crocodile. Upalabhya, understanding. Jagat Nivasaha, the Lord, who exists everywhere. Stotram, the prayer. Nishanya, hearing, Divijayehi, the denizens of the heavenly planets, Saha, with, Samstuvadhi, who were offering their prayers also, Chandomayena, with the speed he desired, Garurena, by Garura, Samuhyamanaha, being carried, Chakra, carrying his disc, Ayudhaha, and other weapons, like the club, Abhyagamat, arrived, Asha, immediately, Yataha, where, Gajendraha, the king of the elephants, Gajendra, was situated. Translation, and there's a small purport by Srila Prabhupada. After understanding the awkward condition of Gajendra, who had offered his prayers, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari, who lives everywhere, appeared with the demigods, who were offering prayers to him carrying his disc and other weapons, he appeared there on the back of his carrier, Garuda, with great speed, according to his desire. Thus, he appeared before Gajendra. Please repeat. After understanding the awkward condition of Gajendra, who had offered his prayers, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, who lives everywhere, appeared with the demigods who were offering prayers to him, carrying his disc and other weapons. He appeared there on the back of his carrier Garuda with great speed according to his desire. Thus he appeared before Gajendra. <clears throat> purport Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur 
specifically hints that since Gajendra was in such a difficult position and was praying for the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the demigods who could have immediately gone to his rescue hesitated to go there. Since they considered Gajendra's prayer to be directed toward the Lord, they felt offended, and this in itself was offensive. Consequently, when the Lord went there, they also went and offered prayers to the Lord so that their offense might be excused. Om Agnana Timirantasya Nananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Pandeham Sri Guru Ho Sri Yutapadakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavanscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalata Sri Vishakhan Vitascha He Krishna Karuna Sintho Dina Bantho Jagatpate Go Pesha Go Bika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamani Hare Priye Vansha Kalpatarubhyascha Tripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is Gajendra the continuing story of Gajendra. We've already heard most of his prayers. Actually, he repeats uh, the next verse. He concludes his prayer. Narayana Khila Guru Bhagavan Namaste. <clears throat> so none of the acharyas have said very much in commenting on this verse, but as Srila Prabhupada points out, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur um, tells us that uh, these demigods were accompanying the Lord Divijayi Saha because they had they were conscious that they had felt slighted when Gajendra did not address them in particular but appeared to be addressing Jibunavasa Hari. Here the word is used in the translation the Supreme Personality of Godhead Hari. Hari of course is a general name for the Supreme Personality of Godhead but in this particular instance, it's also a specific name of a specific incarnation who appears during the reign of, is it Tamasa Manu? I believe so. There are 504,000 Manus who appear every day, uh, so it's hard to keep track of them. But uh, one of them is named uh, Thomas. I believe it's Tamasa Manu at this point in time. And uh, this particular form that appeared before Gajendra was an incarnation of this form, of Hari. And as it's stated here, he came with all of his weapons, and we've all seen the beautiful picture. Um, not, not in this volume, but on one of the volumes of the Eighth Canto. So, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that these devatas, they were um, conscious that they had, at least mentally, um, committed some offense, and so they were coming along with Lord Vishnu, trying to pacify him. Divijayi saha samstuvadhi. Divija. Divija means born in the sky. He's a fancy Sanskrit name for the demigods. And what else is used here? Jagannivasa, one whose residence is the entire cosmos. That's Lord Vishnu. Uh, Jiv Goswami explains that Chandomaya, Chandomayena, here means he went with great speed. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says Chandomahina means he went as fast as his desire would allow him to go. 
And Prabhupada has nicely synthesized those two different comments uh, with his translation, with the speed he desired. Um, I believe it's Viraghava Acharya also discusses Chanda Mahina because it's not a very commonly used term, um, means uh, fast. But he's, he interprets it a different way. Chandomaya means full of chanda, full of Vedic mantras. So they were, they were chanting Vedic mantras such as the Gayatri mantra, etc. This is what they're, this is what they're, the devas were praying. Anyway, the Lord came on Garuda and he came with his chakra weapon and he very quickly came because he wanted to give mercy to Vajendra. I'm going to go ahead and read text 32, if that's okay. Santa sada sirubalena grihita arto drishtvagarutmati harim kaupata chakram utkshipya sambu jakaram giram ahakrachran narayana kilaguro bhagavan namaste. The beautiful prayer here. The whole story is beautiful. Gajendra had been forcefully captured by the crocodile in the water and was feeling acute pain. But when he saw that Narayana, wielding his disc, was coming in the sky on the back of Garuda, he immediately took a lotus flower in his trunk and with great difficulty due to his painful condition, he uttered the following words, O oh my Lord, Narayana, Master of the Universe, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Purport, the king of the elephants was so very eager to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead that when he saw the Lord coming in the sky with great pain and in a feeble voice, he offered respect to the Lord. A devotee does not consider a dangerous position to be dangerous, for in such a dangerous position he can fervently pray to the Lord in great ecstasy. Thus a devotee regards danger as a good opportunity. When a devotee is in great danger, he sees that danger to be the great mercy of the Lord. Because it is an opportunity to think of the Lord very sincerely and with undiverted attention. That's from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 14th chapter, 8th verse, spoken by Lord Brahma. He does not accuse the Supreme Personality of Godhead for having let his devotee fall into such a dangerous condition. Rather, he considers that dangerous condition to be due to his past misdeeds and takes it as an opportunity to pray to the Lord and offer thanks for having been given such an opportunity. When a devotee lives in this way, his salvation, his going back home, back to Godhead, is guaranteed. We can see this to be true from the example of Gajendra, who anxiously prayed to the Lord and thus received an immediate chance to return home, back to Godhead. So we know that the Lord's mercy sometimes manifests in the form of suffering. No one invites or appreciates suffering. No one, it's not pleasant, otherwise it wouldn't be suffering. But <clears throat> it is valuable. Just like human form of life, sometimes it's not always pleasant. Um, but it is valuable. So Gajendra had been captured by this angry crocodile. Why was he angry? Anyone remember? Because Gajendra invaded his space. There were so many, this is a famous resort, you can say, amongst the Devatas. What is it called? Trikuta Mountain. And there was a particular lake there. And the Devatas, they all used to go and enjoy sporting there. And the aquatics, of course, they were living there. It was their place, including this crocodile uh, who was, who was uh, attacking Gajendra. So because Gajendra came and invaded his space and started making all splashing and enjoying with the she-elephants and just in general creating a ruckus, uprooting trees and 
Uh, if you've ever seen elephants, this is what they do. Just for sheer, sheerly for sport, they will pull out a tree and throw it aside, <laughs> just for sport. So this this is what Gajendra was doing there with his all of his she elephants and his friends and relatives. So the crocodile became angry and clamped on his leg. This is what crocodiles do when they they bite you; they don't let go. Instead, they vigorously shake their head and uh, try to create as much disturbance as they can. So Gajendra was obviously very much suffering in this condition. They actually fought for thousands of years, it said. Uh, this fight was going on, and nobody was really gaining the upper hand, except the crocodile was in his element, and so he was able to persevere, whereas Gajendra was clearly losing strength. And here we find that Gajendra is almost finished, and so he just had no other shelter except Krishna at that time. Uh, the poet Bilhamangala Thakur has written a nice verse about this. He says, Antarjade graha grihita pado visrishta viklishta samasta bandho tadaga jendro nitaram jagad govinda damodara madhaveti When the elephant Gajendra was attacked by the crocodile um, and when he was in a very distressed condition also abandoned by his relatives and having no other shelter at that time, he very fervently called out to the Lord, Govinda Damodar Madhava. Sometimes we find that when we are in a difficult circumstances, all of those upon whom we usually depend, or all of those that we usually take shelter of, abandon us. And Shankaracharya has very nicely said also, um, Yavad vitto parjna sakta tavan nijaparivaro rakta. Paschad jivati jarjar dehe. Vartam kopina prithati gehe. That when a person, as long as a person is able to produce money, then that long his family members will be attached to him. Otherwise, when you are in an old, decrepit body, doesn't work anymore, neither the mind works nor the body works, then even in your own home, no one will ask, how are you doing? No one cares. So everyone is brought to this point sooner or later, uh, and Srila Prabhupada has described already in this purport, uh, previous verse, or this verse actually, that a devotee does not consider a dangerous position to be dangerous because in such a dangerous position he can fervently pray to the Lord in great ecstasy. When we are very comfortable and when everything is going fine, that's usually when we forget Krishna. This is the conditional mentality that we have. The psychology is so deeply ingrained, the samskar is so deep within our hearts that we're not even aware of how much, how profound is our desire to try to enjoy independently of Krishna without any regard for Krishna or his representatives. So it's actually mercy upon those of us who are aspiring to be Vaishnavas that the Lord sometimes, from, from time to time, will uh, arrange some difficult circumstance for us. And at that point, even our near and dear family uh, cannot help us or doesn't care for us. Who is another example of this? From Mahabharata? Draupadi. Agre guru namat pandavanam dushasane nahrita vastrakesha Krishna tada krosha dananya natha govinda damodara madhaveti She too took shelter of Krishna by calling his names in this way. She was abandoned by her husbands. Yudhishthir had gambled her away, technically speaking, so she didn't have any husbands anymore even though she had five husbands. <laughs> Just see, even you have five protectors, none of them will come to your aid when the time is not right. So she knew it, and even the Bhishma and uh, so many other elders in the Kuru court, they would not say anything when Dushasana, Duryodhana, and Party were trying to humiliate her. Uh, Karna had his grudge because Karna was rejected from Draupadi Swayamvara, 
So he held a grudge ever since, and he saw now that their chips are down, here's my opportunity to really rub it in. So he encouraged Dushasana, go get Draupadi, bring her here and strip her naked. So imagine, and she was in the time of the month where uh, she should not even go outside, what to speak of be seen naked. So it was such a difficult circumstance for her, but nobody would help her. And even she was pleading with so many kings, so many august personalities were there, nobody would say anything. No one was there for her. Ananyanatha, the word is used, having no other shelter. She had no choice but to call out to Govinda. Now, Rupa Goswami comments on that pastime in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that Krishna so much appreciated this act of Draupadi in her helpless condition when she called out uh, that uh, he uses it in his, in his example of Krishna's Kritagnyata. Kritagnyata means gratitude. Krishna will never forget if a devotee is seriously chanting Krishna's name trying to take Krishna's name into his heart and trying to surrender unto the lotus toes of that beautiful name, then Krishna will never ever forget that. He will remain uh, uh, obliged to that devotee forever. So Draupadi is one example. Here we see Krishna was so much pleased to see, even in a disturbed condition, Gajendra, you can't imagine how much pain he must have been in near death having fought for a thousand years, losing blood, fighting with his crocodile, the pain as well, um, all he could do was snatch a lotus flower with his trunk and, and wave it at the Lord as he saw the Lord coming. And in a feeble voice he said, Not I, Anna, Kila Guru, Bhagavan Namaste. O spiritual master of all, Lord Narayana, Bhagavan, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Simple thing. Manmana bhava mad bhakto mad yaji maam namaskuru. Krishna says four things twice, he says in Bhagavad Gita, that we can do. Uh, one of them is to offer obeisances. So this is his example, glorious example in this dangerous condition. So visrishta viklishta samasta bandhu. All of his friends and relatives had deserted him in his hour of need. And... Um, he was in a very much harassed condition. That's used, the word here is used, Artha, uh, both in text 31 and in text 32. Artha, Srila Prabhupada just, uh, de- translates it as very depressed in text 31, and in text 32, severely suffering. We know this word from Bhagavad Gita, don't we? What four kinds of people take shelter of Krishna? One of them is the Artha, Artha. That's not artha, that's not economic development, it's artha. It's distressed, harassed, pireta. So, this is his condition. <clears throat> so, twice in the purport, Srila Prabhupada says, Tateno kampam susimikshamana, when a devotee is in great danger, and everyone is, sooner or later, then he takes that as the mercy of the Lord. And he thinks that actually this is just my suffering from my previous sinful activities. And because I'm so sinful, I actually deserve to be suffering a lot more than I am. But because Krishna is so kind, karmani nirzahati, Krishna very kindly burns up uh, whatever portion of our karma he sees fit to burn up. And Gintu um, Chabhakti Pajam amongst those who are worshipping him. Um, so the devotee thinks it's actually minimal what I have to go through, but uh, the Lord has been so kind and he's giving me a little bit of suffering just to wake me up to the reality of my situation. So this is the difference between a pious person and an impious person. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Yesham tuvantakatam papam jananam punyakarmanam te dvanvo moha nirmukta They are liberated from the duality of an illusion of material consciousness. Those persons who are solidly situated in virtue, solidly situated in pious actions as enjoined in the Shastra. Those persons, when they suffer, they can think like this. 
they can actually think like this if they have been blessed, uh, particularly by a pure devotee, with this Bhagavata Dharma. On the other hand, those persons who are not so fortunate, who have meager svalpa punya who have meager pious activities, they cannot appreciate it. They will instead blame, the, or as Prabhupada says here, they will accuse the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They will blame him. They become bitter. They become resentful. But those who Mahaprasada Govinde Nama Brahmani Vaishnava, those who have enough pious credits, they never ever lose faith in Mahaprasadam, they never lose their faith in the holy name. Here he's chanting Narayana, according to Bilva Mangalatakur, he also chanted Govinda Damodara Madhava, Vidyadi. They never lose faith, also in the Brahmins or in the Vaishnavas. So, what is the rest of that verse from 10th canto? Tattenu kampam susamikshimano punjana evatma kritam vipakam. Whatever I have cooked by my own doing, that I have to eat. <laughs> That's literally what it means, punjana. I have to eat what I myself have cooked. <laughs> or as we say in English, you, you what is it? You, you, yeah, yeah, something like that. You have to dig your own grave and whatever. Give him a rope long enough, he'll hang himself with it. This, this is our situation. We are so foolish. We are so pushed around by Maya that uh, we do so many stupid things. Um, and then when we suffer for it, we want to blame someone else. This is the etymology of the word Shudra. Shudra. We know in 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says the characteristic of someone who is Brahman realized, what are they? Na shochati, na kanchati. He doesn't hanker, I, I gotta have it. And he doesn't whine or lament about his condition or complain or blame someone else either. Na shochati. So Shankaracharya says, someone who is always complaining and blaming others and whining and like this, that is the shudra. The Brahman, the person who has realized Brahman, Brahmajana Aditi Brahmana, uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't get disturbed too much one way or another. Um, just like so many rivers are flowing into the ocean, but the ocean remains always serene. At least the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Atlantic Ocean has a worse reputation. <clears throat> but the ocean is generally flat. doesn't get bent out of shape, if you will. So this is, the, this is why we have, as a preliminary to devotional service, the necessity to come to, really, Brahman realization. It's what endears a devotee to Krishna. Look at chapter 12 in Bhagavad Gita and see all the characteristics that Krishna mentions specifically that uh, make, him, make the devotee very dear to him. Does anybody know what I'm thinking of? Any of those verses? Advesha sarva bhutanam ityadi. I'll just read the English. One who is not envious, but is a kind friend to all living entities, who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal both in happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, engaged in a devotional service with determination, like Gajendra was, his mind and intelligence fixed on me, such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. He for whom no one is put into difficulty and who is not uh, disturbed by anyone else, who is equipoised in happiness and distress. Second time in three verses. Krishna says that. Fear and anxiety, that person is dear to me. A devotee who is not dependent on the ordinary course of activities, who is pure, expert, without care, is free from all pains and not striving for some result, is dear to me. One who neither rejoices nor grieves, no yo na hrishati, na dveshti, na shochati, na kangshati. We've already heard this. Na shochati, na kangshati. He doesn't hanker, he doesn't lament. Who renounces both auspicious and inauspicious things, such a devotee is very dear to me. One who is equal 
to friends and enemies was equipoise in honor and dishonor, heat and cold, happiness and distress, fame and infamy. This is the third time, I think, in five verses that Krishna says this. Uh, who is always free from contaminating association, always silent and satisfied. That's the second time in five verses he says that. And who doesn't care for any residence, who is fixed in knowledge and engaged in devotional service. The second time he said that as well. Uh, such a person is very dear to me. So what Krishna is describing here, really, these are the symptoms that are also described in chapter 18 of Brahman realization. And in fact, they're described again in chapter 6. Uh, the same things we find again and again and again. Take a look, if you have the folio, uh, for the phrase tata mana pamani oho, and see how many times it comes up again in Bhagavad Gita. And then Srimad Bhagavatam, it's off the charts, because there's so much more there. So these, these are important things to consider. If we want to become dear to Krishna, the prerequisite for real bhakti, according to chapter 18, we will get real bhakti when we are Brahman realized. That is the prerequisite. And we see that those devotees who have this kind of realization, they are the best of yogis who are able to empathize with other living entities by dint of that realization. So Gajendra is giving us this example because we are going to be attacked by crocodiles. If we are not being attacked already within this ocean of material existence, just wait. Your turn is coming. We don't know. Ten years down the road, what kind of test Krishna has in store for us. I can tell you from my personal experience. I was in Vrindavan when our god-brother Kushakratha Prabhu left this world. And there was another devotee. His name is Baladev Vidyabhushan. He was taking care of Kushakratha in his last days. And I saw how, what kind of service he was rendering. Those who take care of an elderly person, they know. It's no picnic. And, uh, you know, the, when a person is dying in particular, it's not easy time. Sometimes they're not always reasonable. They get cranky. They yell at you. There's so much filth. You have to clean up their stool. You have to do everything. You have to do everything. So I remember thinking at that time that, my God, how, what, what kind of sacrifice is he doing? I don't think I could ever do that. And then lo and behold, immediately, as soon as I came to America, a few months only later, Krishna arranged that, arranged that very situation for me <laughs> with my mother, who nearly died. And is all still, to this, to this day, she's an invalid. I'm still taking care of her. So, anyway, Krishna will arrange these circumstances for us, very dangerous uh, condition or very difficult condition, just to force us to come to this Brahman realization, to, begin, to become equipoised in happiness and in, in, or in distress. And sometimes, as we know from chapter, well, from several chapters in Bhagavad Gita, several different places it's mentioned or indicated, sometimes we, we know also that even the, um, the most, even happiness is, is a worse threat, is a worse danger than distress is. Sukham badhanat pramochyate. Uh, Krishna says the mode of goodness is the most insidious of all material contamination because it's elevated and elevating. It will carry us, can carry us out of this world if we take advantage of it by divine grace. But at the same time, it conditions us to a sense of complacence, a sense of happiness, pride in knowledge, you see, so happiness is equally dangerous as distress, but distress almost always pushes us, in, if we are pious, into this fervent prayer such as Gajendra is offering. So this pastime is glorified all over the universe since time immemorial. Um, you see in so many paintings and so many sculptures, this motif is there, Gajendra, a very famous uh, painting. He took shelter in his darkest hour. He took shelter of Krishna in whatever way he could, at least by chanting the Lord's name. And here in this verse we see he grabbed a lotus flower and that's all he could wave at Lord Narayana. 
in his disturbed condition. So, Tad Bhagva Purvira Vidatan Namaste, when a devotee uses his words and his body, uh, and of course his mind, to offer to the Supreme Personality Godhead, even in such a distressed condition, Jiveta Yo Mukti Pade Sadaya Bhak, then his inheritance is Mukti. It's virtually assured. Just like if you're in the will, you know all you have to do is continue to exist. And then you will get your inheritance. So if we continue to exist in Krishna consciousness with this particular attitude, taking shelter of the Lord, even when we are utterly distressed, even when the mind is reeling with that distress, this is the practice. If there's no if there's no difficulty, then how is it that we are going to be tested? How will our devotion be clear? Krishna likes to do this. He likes to test his devotees. All the time he does this. Just like Mother Yashoda, even don't think that when you go back to God it becomes any easier. <laughs> well, Mother Yashoda, she put Krishna out on a nice blanket in the courtyard, no problem. She went inside to do some housework and she heard some rumbling noise she looked out the window and she saw these roiling, boiling black rain clouds ominously thundering. She thought, oh my God, what's happening? And then she went out to get Krishna and he was gone. Or Vasudeva. Vasudeva didn't know what the future held, just like Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj had not read the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, describing his pastime with Lord Narasimhadeva. His father was trying to kill him in so many ways, threw him off a mountain, threw him into a pit of snakes, and so many... He was going on, just tolerating. He had no idea what the future held. Vasudev escaped from the prison of Kamsa after all the guards were put to sleep, and he didn't know what to do. All he knew is that he had to somehow get his son out of there. And he saw the Yumana was raging, storming. Somehow or other, he prayed, and the waters parted, as in the Bible, also the similar story is there. And he went across, but as he was crossing the shallow Yamuna, at that point shallow, peaceful water, somehow or other the Lord, just to increase his anxiety, disappeared, fell into the water. Oh my God. You see? I hope I'm not discouraging those of you who are just taking up this process. <laughs> but the, the key here is this. A devotee does not consider a dangerous position to be dangerous, for in such a dangerous position he can fervently pray to the Lord in great ecstasy. This is the secret. Non-devotees cannot understand this. Those who are experienced, they know. You don't have to explain it to them. They are experienced. But the non-devotees, even if you do explain it to them, they cannot understand it because this is the nature of devotional service. Pratyaksha avagamam. It is apprehended. It is understood directly through direct experience. Sakshad parokshano bhuti. Direct, unmediated uh, ex internal experience. That is the nature of it. So this is this is Gajendra. Uh, even the dangers are there. Um, he was able to surrender to Narayana. He had that good fortune. And because he did so, the Lord was very pleased. So this is, again, the point that Rupa Goswami makes with regard to Draupadi in particular, but it's also applicable here to Gajendra and to ourselves as soon as we find ourselves in this condition. Krishna will become so grateful. How grateful? He came as fast as he could think of it. There's one Brajbhasha song by Surdas about this also. Hey Govinda, hey Gopal. That famous song is also described in his pastime. He heard this prayer from Dwarka and he came on the back of Garuda and he saved his devotee. So this is, as I said, so many, so many paintings are there, so much sculpture is there, so many poems are there glorifying this very, very famous pastime of the Lord. Uh, these are just a few things we can think about, these two verses. I'll stop here if anybody has any questions or comments. Actually, we're almost finishing the verse. In fact, there's only one verse left in the chapter, so maybe I'll just read it, and then we'll be done. 
The next chapter is Gajendra returns to the spiritual world, but I'll read text 33 first. Tam vikshya pīdita majap sahasāvat irtya sagraham āshu sarasa kripayo jahār grahad vipādita mukhād arināga jendram sampashyatam hariramum uchadutriyānam Thereafter, seeing Gajendra in such an aggrieved position, the unborn Supreme Personality of Godhead, Hari, immediately got down from the back of Garuda by his causeless mercy and pulled the king of the elephants, along with the crocodile, out of the water. Then, in the presence of all the demigods who were looking on, the Lord severed the head, the crocodile's mouth, from its body with his disc. In this way, he saved Gajendra, the king of the elephants. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports the 8th canto, 3rd chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Gajendra's Prayers of Surrender. Any questions or comments? Jai. I'll go ahead. Uh, you mentioned that just by uh, a person who is in the will, just by uh, remaining alive, he receives the benefits of being just, just by remaining alive, one who is written into a will will you know, automatically inherit. However, we see those uh, who, have, uh, who have joined Shiva Prabhupada and have gone on before us, who have done such significant things, and we look at what we've done and there's nothing significant. Uh, how can we expect to receive the inheritance? I'm not sure I understand your question. Can you rephrase it? I'll try. There are those who have gone before us, those the disciples of Prabhupada and, and grandsons of Prabhupada, who have given up their bodies. Uh, who, and we look at what they've done in their lifetimes, it has been significant. But when we look at our own lives, uh, we see that we have done, have done nothing significant. So, uh, why should we think that we would be also the inheritors of the world? A devotee in his humility thinks that he's not a devotee. And I think that's the essence of what you're saying. However, at the same time, a devotee has firm faith that Krishna will always protect him. And these are one of the symptoms of Sharanagati, surrender in devotion, surrender in humility, really, is what it is. So a devotee feels that even though I don't deserve any attention from Krishna, I know that Krishna, because he is infinitely compassionate, Krishna will also take care of me. He'll not let me go. Aho bhakiyam stanakala kutam jighasaya to what more merciful Lord should I go? When Bhakti Putana came to Krishna to kill him by smearing this powerful poison on her breast, Krishna took it that she's coming in the mood of a matri bhava, mood of a mother, vatsalya bhava. And so he not only liberated her when he killed her, but he gave her the position of a nursemaid in Golok Vrindavan or Gokula Vrindavan. So how can we be more merciful than that? We, she was not even trying for bhakti, although she had a, a, a hint of some attraction, but she was not by any means a sadhika, not a practicing devotee, not a practitioner, as they say. So... If that's the condition of, if that's what happened to Putana, then certainly Krishna will be merciful to us. We're tr at least trying and asking, begging from his devotees that we can have bhakti. It's, it's not a function of our qualification or not, it's a function of the Lord's infinite qualities, such as primarily his compassion, especially in this day and age. That is Lord Chaitanya's primary characteristic, his compassion. It's infinite. Daya Sagara. Oi Vaishnava Thakura Dayara Sagara Nidase Karuna Kari. That. Is that okay? Anyone else? One, one could argue that, uh, that 
Bhutan had the good fortune of being in the personal presence of the Supreme Lord, even touching his body. Uh, we are not so fortunate to be in that position. So Au contraire. Huh? Au contraire. We are, we are here in the presence of Sri Sri Radha Kalachanji. We are in the presence of the Holy Name. We are filling our body with Mahaprasadam. Therefore I said, Mahaprasada Govinde, Nama Brahmani Vaishnava. We have these Vaishnavas. We are in the personal presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You cannot doubt it. Can we? We are not seeing the presence of the Personality of Godhead, but there's no argument that he's not here. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this day and age is so eager to give out this love of Godhead. Um, what is that verse in the 11th canto? Chaktva Sudhustra Jasurev Sita Rajya Lakshmin Dharmishta Arya Vachasaya Ragad Aranyam He's gone to the forest Maya Mrigam Dayite Dayite Yep Sitam Anuadhavad Anuadhavad means he's running after us. We're like foolish animals trying to escape him, and he's running after us. This is how the Goswamis in, interpret that verse. It, it is applicable in three ways. Sridhar Swami takes it to refer to Lord Ramchandra. Jeev Goswami takes it to refer to uh, Lord Krishna. And I think it's Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur takes it to refer to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As reference to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, it means he's running after us, even though we're no better than foolish animals. He's running after us to pull us back. If, if, uh, if the Lord is so eager to get us back, then uh, why is it stated that uh, uh, many who, who seek me, very few find me? That also Krishna admits. In Bhagavad Gita, Manushya Nam Sahasreshu Kashyadhyay. He's not going to give it for free, although it's freely available. He's giving it for free, but it's not free. There, there is a price. You have to pay with your faith. That is the price. If you want to buy the holy name, you have to believe in it. You have to have that much capital to invest. Adho Shraddha, that we know. Adho Shraddha Tata Sadhu Sangha Tyadi. If you invest some initial faith in the process of sadhu sangha and are thereby engaged in bhajana kriya, then anartha navritti will go on and you will become firm, you will become, you'll get a taste, you'll become attached to it, bhava will develop and ultimately the in prema. But we have to invest some faith, that much we have to have. Therefore Krishna says, yesham pontagatam papam ityadi. Those who are not so fortunate, they cannot persevere. It's an open secret. Not everybody can do this. And even of those who try, not everybody makes it. But if we push, if we really push, Krishna always responds. He doesn't let us go. You know, he won't forget us. Rukha Swami says, you gamble. Make this gamble. Try. See what happens. Give him everything. See what he does. It's beautiful. Anything else? Parahari Prabhu, any comments? The Lord's compassion is the most beautiful thing. Thank you very much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada.